Hello and welcome to another episode of Iranga Talk. Today is spring day, a day where we celebrate growth and rebirth. And I know amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of us are anxious for some rebirth. So I'm your host for today, Irene Marie van der Walt. And in today's episode, Thomas Ipanda, the creator of the Intercity app, is going to tell us a little bit more about this app and how he has made travel more efficient for the general public. As always, I'll bring you the latest news, weather and tides. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this. And now it is time for your news. And our first story for today, Azan Madesia and her brother Stephen Bolundu, who are charged with the murder of Shannon Wasserfall, made a brief appearance in the Waffles Bay Magistrates Court on Tuesday morning. Their case was again postponed, this time to the 11th of October, to allow the duo to obtain the services of a legal aid lawyer. The case was initially postponed for the same reason during a previous court appearance in July 2021. Gilroy Casper represented the two previously. Mulundu and Madisia had also set their bail application for the 21st to the 23rd of June. However, this did not materialize due to the absence of their lawyer. Madisia said that they have applied for legal aid and are waiting for an answer. Prosecutor Anakleta Kanjimi represented the state, while John Sindano was the magistrate at the latest court proceedings. Today, Medici appeared with a new hairstyle as she was ordered to remove her long braids, which apparently pose a safety risk. Community Affairs Unit Commander Inspector Eleni Shapumba stated that it is something that we are concerned about. We already directed her to remove the braids due to safety concerns. And in our second story for today, Rossing Uranium recently held its annual long service awards honoring 11 employees who served the company for over 30, 35, 40 and 45 years. Speaking at the event themed Our Legend, Managing Director Yuan Kutsia said that the uranium mining giant doesn't often get the chance to publicly thank its staff for the many years of service they have devoted to the mine. He praised the employees for their loyalty, commitment and dedication. These traits are rare in this day and age when job hopping is fashionable. The continual search for better opportunities and new experiences mean that staff seldom stay longer than a few years at the same company. So, in a sense, this group represents a rare breed of employees, he said. And then in our third and final story for today, the Walfus Bay Municipal Council approved the lease of a tract land to win salt and manufacturing for the establishment of a salt lick product manufacturing factory. A salt lake is a deposit of mineral salts used by animals to supplement their nutrition, ensuring that they get enough minerals in their diet. The allocated one hectare is on, portion of, is, is on a portion of land of Farm 38. Leroy Victor, chairperson of the management committee, said that Winsalt manufacturer PTY Limited was established in 2018 and is a Walfus Bay based and Namibian registered company. Winsalt made a presentation to council on 14 July 2021, where the company was introduced to councillors and the issue of the land was discussed. The company manufactures salt lake products for animals as well as tablets for dishwashers and water softening machines and currently sells most of their products locally. However, they also export products to Angola, Zambia and Uganda. And on that note, we end today's news. With me 
here is Tom Aipanda, who is the, one of the co-founders of Intercity. Uh, Intercity has written on your shirt there. <laughs> How are you doing, Mr. Aipanda? I'm doing very well. Mm. Um, in fact, I'm doing so well that uh, we are three years old now. Sure. Happy, happy, <laughs> happy belated <laughs> birthday thank from you. Irongo Talk. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, for, for those who do not know, what is, what is Intercity all about? All right, Intercity is basically a mobile application mm. um, and this mobile application uh, enables users that are signed up on it mm -hmm. to basically share their travel plans um, mm -hmm. and as you know for most of us that are you know just making ends meet um, uh, millennials that are out and about um, who are never really settling in one place mm -hmm. there's always this constant and sustained need for uh, mobility yeah and for a vast country like Namibia um, it becomes very expensive so what intercity does is it puts together uh, all the transport users those that uh, um, that are traveling as transport operators yeah those that need transport yeah uh, and those that are just traveling for leisure or in their personal capacity. And all what we do is we put them all in one platform mm -hmm. and allow them to share plans. They can communicate and say, okay, I'm so, driving to Valfest. Exactly. So now once, once the plans are shared, mm -hmm. then it becomes easier to share those plans. Okay. Which means if I'm traveling from... Swakop Moon to Wolvish Bay at mm. 2 o'clock tomorrow yeah. morning, I mean tomorrow afternoon. As soon as I post my plan, another user that is in need of the same transport arrangement from Swakop to Wolvish Bay mm -hmm. will be able to connect with me. Right. And through that, we share transport. Now, you can imagine the benefits of mm. uh, shared transport. Yes. The cost definitely comes down, definitely. not only for me as a traveler, mm -hmm. but also for the, uh, for the driver. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of it is that as a driver or as a, travel, as a, as a driver, mm -hmm. I am already going to my destination. So I had already planned my trip, mm -hmm. I had already accounted for it, how mm -hmm. I'm going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So how much more beautiful does it get that I can now connect to other passengers that would like to go to the same yes. destination. Definitely. I mean, it's, 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 it's a genius idea. How did you come up uh, with it and who are your other partners in this uh, initiative? Um, Intercity is basically a partnership between two local companies. Uh, mm. And how we came up with the idea um, was that on the one hand, you had um, uh, Nepal, which is one of the partners. Um, that was actively looking for uh, investments uh, in mm -hmm. new technology and new business ideas. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, you had uh, uh, Logic Plus, mm. and they were just crazy programmers. Um, and we came together through a mutual friend, uh, and we saw that there is actually a need to modernize mobility and transportation across the country. Mm. Um, and that is how we came up with that idea. And on the 1st of June, 2008, <laughs> uh -huh. we launched the app. Okay. So the one thing that um, we pride ourselves in is that we've really grown, natural mm. growth mm. Uh, with time. And from 2018, when we only had 300, 000, 300 users in, on day one, Yeah. We are now sitting at 25,000 users sure, sure, sure. on the app. That's good. So not only does it demonstrate um, uh, popularity, but mm. functionality and usability. So you are basically Namibia's very own Uber, but online. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think the distinction that most people get wrong is that um, Uber generally is uh, intertown travel. Okay. So say from Mandesa, uh, to town yeah. or Kramersdorf, uh, but with Intercity, as the name suggests, mm. we are actually traveling between cities. Okay, and we realize that within the cities, the taxis are generally enough. Mm. 
There's plenty of them. I'm mm. sure you know how they fight over client customers. Yes, yes. But traveling between towns becomes a bit more tricky and a bit more expensive. And that is our focus area. Mm. And yeah. it saves time, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. It saves time. I can tell you the typical experience for anyone traveling to the north mm. is standing in the bus for four hours, waiting mm. for the bus to fill up, mm. being charged $500 for a seat, mm. your bags being grabbed and no aircon, all these things. All that these is things. a typical experience. But now we eliminate that because the user simply goes through the plans and chooses his ideal yeah. ride. And when you're, you're talking about you no know, aircon and so on, the <laughs> question that comes to mind is social distancing. Now you can actually go into a, a private vehicle and you are safer, if I can put it that Exactly. Way. Yeah. In fact, when the um, regulations were stringent, the first thing that happened is the prices shot up mm. for the normal uh, public transport. Mm -hmm. And that's because they now had to account for a full trip but with half the people. But you can imagine if I'm driving my uh, uh, Corolla um, mm. to Ventuk and I'm the only one, if I get uh, two extra people, yeah. we are sitting three, we're still within the regulations, mm -hmm. and much safer because you're not exposed to a large group of people. Yes. So it is actually the most preferred mode of transport now, especially to, uh, during COVID. Right. What, what challenges has Intercity ha um, experienced during the past three years and how have you overcome this? Sure, I think the, the biggest challenge is uh, uh, a paradigm shift or uh, convincing people that this is a new way of doing things. Mm. Um, you can imagine uh, approaching someone that um, does not have an email account, for example. Mm. Right, and you want to introduce them to this great product, mm -hmm. but one of the most fundamental things to run an app on your phone, you must have an active email address. Yes, and you must have a internet connectivity. Yeah. So you must have a smartphone. Yes. So those were the challenges we had to overcome. Mm -hmm. But I think for the affluent Namibian and uh, uh, millennials like ourselves, it was easy to get the concept, and it was easy to get buy-in. So, uh, and that is why we took a bit of time to grow, um, but I think the landscape, uh, which is the second challenge, the landscape in Namibia is generally mm. difficult in business uh, environment because the numbers generally don't add up. So, um, if you were to make a dollar out of every user that you have, right, so that would be $25,000. Mm. However, to get 25,000 Namibians on a single app mm. that they actively use will always be a challenge because our population is limited by yeah. <laughs> so that was the second biggest challenge mm -hmm. and we and we, we 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 had to spend a lot on marketing yeah. although some of our new users always argue that this is such a great app. Where have you guys been? How come I did not know about this? So you can never spend enough on marketing. Um, so we had to spend a lot on marketing. And as a result, we did burn quite a lot of cash in an attempt to convince people and to get them on board. I think those two are the, the biggest challenges. Um, the third one, which is perhaps not such a big challenge, uh, was the fact that we we had to... It's a project uh, that we were running, uh, you know, in the garage, you know, part time, mm. and that normally always has knock-on effect on business development and growth mm. because your energy is split. Mm -hmm. um, but through all of that, I think we are still very happy with the progress we made. The growth made. is very good from 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 three hundred from three hundred. <laughs> To twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. No, I mean, after five years, maybe we'll see a big, a bigger number also. Definitely. So, um, where can we find your app? And also, I mean, this is now the fourth industrial revolution. So, I'm sure we're heading in that direction. Ah, is that the new norm now? It's my um, favorite. Apps. My favorite topic. Yeah. Um, our life has basically been reduced to mobile phones, mm -hmm. uh, and everything gets done on the phone. Um, whether it's now running the office, you get virtual office apps. Yes. Um, um, you you have 
you your transportation is now on the mobile meetings are on zoom meetings are on zoom mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, and um, food is now on dial a meal yes so everything is now on the phone and I think the way we are moving to now is that your ID is basically going to be now your <laughs> your cell phone oh, yeah. and and that is what um, uh, 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 the industrial revolution is really bringing us uh, as putting everything uh, it, it, everything becomes now a one-stop shop so it's um, compact isn't it yeah uh, compact and it's online yeah and so that's 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 where we are heading and I think the most important thing for all of that to work together is we must have strong enablers mm. and by strong enablers I mean very good uh, infrastructure in terms of internet connectivity mm. that will really allow um, uh, everyone to feed off uh, uh, this internet of things as they call it uh, for everyone to find their niche market and uh, in a, in a way to make money. So, and um, where are you so guys involved? Uh, where are you guys? Where can we find Intercity? Yes, yeah, sorry. Play, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for Android users, um, Intercity is uh, available on uh, on uh, on uh, Google Play, mm -hmm. uh, and for iOS, it's also available on Play Store. Okay. Um, and we are constantly developing the app. So you would find that um, 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 we the current version that is that is available, I think was about updated about um, uh, three months ago, mm -hmm. and with every with every release, uh, we are making the app uh, more more and better and user friendly. User -friendly. Yeah. Um, uh, for example, currently now on on the on the on the Intercity app, you are basically able to rate uh, drivers. Wow. Now. Just imagine the benefit of anyone that connects on the app mm. before they book. They can they actually can see. see that mm, Adolf has been a naughty driver. Four stars, only two stars. And he only has two stars. Okay. And the, the passenger actually wrote a comment there for mm. everyone to see. Sure. So it creates a transparent, self regulating market. It also market. allows the driver to improve his driving. Exactly. Yes. So, where else are you going to find a better driver mm. than on Intercity where he's? open to public scrutiny. All right. Before we go, what are your last words? My last words is obviously for everyone watching this to download the app. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the best decision you make. Um, and secondly, is just to encourage my um, fellow entrepreneurs and young people out there. It is a struggle. Um, it's not easy to uh, make ends meet. It's not easy to push through with your business development, but stick with it. Um, connect with as many people as you can. Something will give, something will give. And the idea is that we all grow and that we all find some way of benefiting from this uh, industrial revolution. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tom Panda. Great stuff. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. All right. All right. for your team. My name is Rowan van Dijk. I'm a leadership trainer, speaker, author. And I want to explain to you today what it means to be the beacon. How do you shine the light to your team? What does it mean to shine the light to your team? 
Your team needs your guidance. If you look at a light, if you look at a lighthouse, what is the purpose of a lighthouse? It's planted on a rock on the shore in a dangerous area where boats can get into trouble or run aground. And the light indicates that year's land. So it gives the captain of the ship an opportunity and a choice to re-navigate his route so that he doesn't get into trouble. Now in the same way, you as the leader need to be the light. You need to be the beacon, the lighthouse to your team. And how do you do that? Very simple. In a previous video, I spoke to you about setting the example. By being prepared to do what you ask your team to do, to show them you can do it and that you're willing to do it. Being the light means that if I'm expecting my team to do things and I run into stormy seas, I start getting into trouble or the economy takes a dip or as we're experiencing in South Africa currently, we have uh, load shedding. So because of problems with electricity, they switch our electricity off for four or five hours at a time. So suddenly the electricity is off and you're in a manufacturing environment and the machines are standing still and you're going to miss your deadline and you know, the boss has a problem and the boss is not recognizing the achievements of the team. All those hassles that you have. That's when you as the leader need to stand strong. You then need to be the beacon. You need to attract the people to your light to say, guys, here I am. I will show the way. I will fight. I will carry us through. Yeah, I think of years ago, the Civil War, the Anglo-Boer War, all these wars where you had, especially uh, in the medieval times with the kings, the king was the leader. The, the, they were in charge, the, the colonel, the general. But did you ever see them lead the charge? No, they didn't. They sent the other people into battle. Why? They were strategizing, and if things went wrong, they had to re-strategize. But they were sacrificing their people. You as the leader need to say, send a message to your team and tell them that, I'm here for you. I have your back. I'm fighting for you. Follow me. I'll lead us through the storm. I'll lead us through the desert. I'll lead us through this economic crunch. Whatever problems we're having, the restructuring, the retrenching at work. And especially now in the time of AI, we have artificial intelligence, which is overflowing us and flooding us like a tsunami when in fact it's actually been around for years and years, decades. But now suddenly people are beginning to say, oh, the robot's going to take my job and I, you know, there's a chatbot that's taking over. Yes, it's true, it's happening. But if you do your proper research, you'll find that for every job that a robot's taking over, there are actually three, four other jobs being created. So you as the leader need to guide these people. Tell your team. Yes, I know you could possibly lose your job to a robot or to a humanoid or to a chatbot or to whatever, but we're going to put you on this training program and then we are going to redeploy you in a new job so that you still have work, but it's just a different job because that is the result of AI. But this takes you being the beacon, you caring about your team enough to show them the way, to lead them in the right direction. Because then they will trust you, and then they will follow you. If you follow my series on leader rings, on creating leader rings, you will see how you go about creating this. So remember, you need to shine your light. Not a faded light, but a bright light. So that your people can see you, and they can follow you. And you need to show them by leading by example. Comment below, tell me whether you like this video or not, like, dislike. If you like the video, share it with as many people as you want to, you think would benefit from it. And subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon so that you can get some notifications as the new videos get released. Thank you for watching.
And now it is time for your weather and tides for Swakopmund and all the other major towns in the Aronga region. In your weather for today, Office Bay expects a maximum temperature of 18 degrees Celsius with a minimum of 11 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 18 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is expected to prevail in a westerly direction at 11 kilometers per hour. Sunrise was this morning at 13 minutes past 7 and sunset is expected at 8 minutes to 7 tonight. In Swakopmund, a maximum temperature of 18 degrees Celsius is expected today, with a minimum of 11 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 17 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is expected to prevail in a westerly direction at 9 km per hour. Sunrise was this morning at 13 minutes past 7 and sunset is expected at 8 minutes to 7 tonight. In Hentis Bay, a maximum temperature of 18 degrees Celsius is expected today with a minimum of 12 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 17 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is expected to prevail in a south-southwesterly direction at 11 km per hour. The sun rose this morning at 13 minutes past 7 and is expected to set at 7 minutes to 7 tonight. Arandas expects a maximum temperature of 29 degrees Celsius for today with a minimum of 9 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 26 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is ex expected to prevail at, in a westerly direction at 9 km per hour. Sunrise was this morning at 11 minutes past 7 and is expected to set at 10 minutes to 7 tonight. Usakos expects a maximum temperature of 34 degrees Celsius for today with a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 34 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is expected to prevail in a northwesterly direction at 9 km per hour. Sunrise was this morning at 8 minutes past 7 and the sun is expected to set at 12 minutes to 7 tonight. Karibab expects a maximum temperature of 33 degrees Celsius for today with a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 32 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is expected to prevail in a northwesterly direction at 11 km per hour. Sunrise was this morning at 7 minutes past 7 and the sun is expected to set at 13 minutes to 7 tonight. Lastly, Umaruru expects a maximum temperature of 33 degrees Celsius for today with a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius for tomorrow. The wind is expected to prevail in a northwesterly direction at 11 km per hour. The sun rose this morning at 6 minutes past 7 and is expected to set at 13 minutes to 7 tonight. So that unfortunately brings us to the end of another episode of Iranga Talk. It was wonderful having you in our company. So you don't have to miss us too much until tomorrow because you can check out our website. That's www.iranga.com.na. It's www.iranga.com.na. And if you want to get in touch with us and let us know what's happening in your town and your community, you can get in touch with us on WhatsApp and on Telegram at 0811-7040. That's 0811-7040. So until tomorrow, we know it is spring day we know we all want to be excited for a new season but we need to remain safe so wear your mask social distance sanitize your hands take care of yourselves and take care of each other we'll see you again tomorrow